Hi, welcome to Door to Door with your host, me, Judy Stakey. Join me as I travel all over interviewing songwriters about their process. Hi, I am so honored to be sitting here today with one of my most favorite writers and great friends, Jamie Houston. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Jamie is an artist, a songwriter, a musician, an engineer, a producer, uh, a publisher, a and R person, a and R representative, uh, husband, father, and ten years ago, um, you performed my wedding ceremony. <laughs> I did a doctor and a lawyer. And, yeah, the highlight of your life. It was like. actually it was a big deal. So Jamie has written um, songs with and for such an array of, of uh, uh, has crossed genres, I should say. Um, everyone from Steven Tyler to Santana to Sheryl Crow to Miley Cyrus to Macy Gray to Jessica Simpson to one of my favorite, Lucy Woodward. Yes, I love Lucy. <laughs> and you are currently working on a three-piece um, Eagles type of band well done. Um, and here in Nashville where we're sitting in your studio um, called Levon, right? Yep. There we go. Yep. All right. So welcome. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's my you. studio. Exactly. Come on. <laughs> Come on. All right. So get down to the questions. So, Mr. Jamie Houston, how did we meet? We met other than the official, I guess the first time we met was when you came into town and you actually saw me play, which I don't remember much of that night because I was too nervous. But, <laughs> um, but actually we met through a friend of mine and, and at the time a manager, Bob Nickman, mm -hmm. and you, uh, you had gotten a cut for, um, a, of a song that I had written with J.D. Martin, who mm -hmm. was my best friend. Or one of my, my one of my two best friends, and uh, I have don't to get the other one jealous. Yeah, I know. I, I don't want to make sure it's you know, yeah. <laughs> but um, we got him got a cut on a song called One Heart. Oh yeah. And um, Kathy Tricoli. That's right. Yeah. And Clay Cross. Clay Cross. Clay Cross. Yeah. yeah. And so we uh, ended up. That was the the catalyst for us meeting. Yeah. And and we had yeah. our first at first lunch at Mezzaluna. Oh wow! You in Brentwood. I do. Oh okay. Now I kind of remember that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. And then we spent nine years together yep. um, at Warner Chapel. Yes. And first nine years of your life. <laughs> it was, yeah. It was. It was. It was a great time. It was great. It was yeah. great. It was a great playground for you to really, um, as we were talking earlier, you have such um, you have such a varied career and that you have done so many things. I mean, so. Um, uh, it was great to have that time to be able to experiment, you know. To oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it was really, it was really legitimized yeah. what I wanted. I mm -hmm. felt like I was on my way at that point. Publisher can do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So what is your creative process? Oh, man. Um, for, for just, I, I just, I like to be moved. And so if I'm working with, if I'm working with an artist, obviously that gives me a little motivation to kind of get to work and not be lazy that day. Mm -hmm. But um, I, it really varies depending on who the act is, you know. Fair like, enough. Like, give me, yeah. give me an example. Like, all right. Do you um, do you all start with the music? Do you all start with lyrics? Mm, you know what? Uh, more often than not, I would say I start musically, um, just because I'm. It, it's it's a lot easier door to open. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, um, I try to catalog ideas, weird lyrical ideas. I don't necessarily um, write titles down all the time. If I can do that, that's great. But I tend to think of like uh, I like obscure, quirky stuff. Do you end stuff. up preparing, or do you more like come into the room and just kind of feel it and see what's there for the day? It really, I would say probably ninety percent of the time I prepare. Okay. Yeah. How do you prepare? Um, I try to get something um, like a little musical hook idea or something and then uh, a concept for a lyric if I can mm -hmm. and then um, when it, you know nowadays it's probably 95% of writing with the artist you don't get to oh, write co-write with yeah. other writers as yeah. much unless yeah. it's a three-way so um, so I, I tend to listen to some of what their history is or what their influences are mm -hmm what I think their influences are without asking them because I can, you know, you listen to them and grab what you can. Yeah. 
kind of go that way. So what kind of work did you put in as a young writer um, to get where you are creatively today? Um, wrote a lot of songs, <laughs> to, you know, <laughs> writing every day, honestly. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I was that guy, I think, that when I was first starting out, because I was fortunate enough to write with people who had been, you know, been doing it for quite a while. Um, I was always the guy who had a hard time leaving the session, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, but we could still do this, or we could, you know, how about this idea type of thing? And I would drive a couple of people crazy, but <laughs> it worked out okay. You know, I'm yeah. a lot more relaxed now yeah. than I was. I have to say, you are one writer that wrote a lot of songs. You, yeah. I mean, when you add them all up, you know, at the end of the day, you were the top five. Oh, really? Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. You, Sorry. Your output was... <laughs> <laughs> You know, one of my favorite things, Jamie, is when you would come into my office and you would stand in front of my desk and you would say, okay, I've got a great idea. What about this? And you would just start singing. You would beat your chest and you would lay out the whole song. Right. <laughs> it was just, I loved it. I was like, yeah. I get paid for this. <laughs> yeah. It was, well, I couldn't play an instrument when I first started. Right. You know, so it's... You, that's right. You know what? I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. I heard melodies and stuff, but I never really, my mom, I remember I, I tried to learn guitar when I was a kid, and then my mom came in, and, and she was having a bad day, and she says, you sound crazy, because I was trying to find a note going, na, 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 you know, on the guitar right. and stuff, and and she goes, you sound like a nut, get out of the house and go play, and I'm like, oh, God, so I stopped playing guitar for a long time. And so when you picked it back up, did you go take lessons, or did you no, just pick it up? I just, I started playing with I started playing with people who were, I was around people who could play really well. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, I, I got tired of giving pieces, this is gonna be, it could be misconstrued, but I got tired of just co-writing with people just because I couldn't play an instrument. I understand. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense. Not that they limited. weren't adding something no. to the pie. It, was, right. it wasn't that at all. It was just that I, I had things that I wanted to come in with flushed out and sometimes it would go you know take a left turn and it was a real drag when you were fighting for an idea yeah. you know but Jamie for some that's okay to be you know to, to not want that but for you yeah. it's just you 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 craved more you know you yeah just it's a control more. issue I have <laughs> lots of therapy okay exactly <laughs> um, how do you stay musically current oddly enough I listen to old stuff I listen to a lot of, um, obviously I stay current with, with what's on the radio. I try to listen to what's out there. Mm -hmm. But then what I find is that the more, um, the more things I lean on that I, that I love from when I was a kid, mm -hmm. I can introduce those to the situation with a younger artist. It might be something they're not, re they're not expecting, and right. to them I seem really fresh. Yep. Stupid. No, but it, <laughs> no, but it's it's like um, it, it kind of you know there there is a, a vast rich history of you know of amazing exactly. songs mm -hmm. and and you only know from where you come and so I I try to draw from that. Right. Yeah. Um, what inspires you to get up every day and do this? You know, I think it's just because it's such. From the perspective of my family and everything else, it seems like we're playing, and a lot of times we are just kind of having fun. There's a lot of work that goes in it to learn mm -hmm. a craft, but it's hard not to want to come out and do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just uh, you're making music. Yeah, yeah. it's not. You know, it might not be a cure for cancer, right. and I'd like to be able to do something redeeming. You'd be but, surprised yeah. how much music affects our health and how our oh, yeah. emotional state and and can cure cancer. Yeah. Do you have a great co-writing tip that you'd like to share? You know what? I think probably the best thing that I've learned as a co-writer has really helped me in other relationships in my life, which is um, is learning how to hear someone out with their idea and then trying to find a balance without compromising. It's also learning how to um, 
check your ego at the door. It's, it's a bit of a cliche for writers yeah. sometimes, but it, being able to do what's right for the moment, and right for the song, and right. with, your, with your, my wife and stuff like that, she may not see it, but I know that we'd have a lot more arguments if I wasn't a little better at handling my, my um, desire to want to, you know, it's a difference between, it's like when you fight, do you want to be right or do you, you know, right. you know, that type of thing. So I think that's the, been the best case scenario for me, I mean, the best situation, the best thing I've learned. It's so interesting because, you know, I, I mean, you, you co-write every day of your life practically. You yeah. know, it's like it's what you, it's in your blood. And every day you have to go and have a new relationship. I mean, it's yeah. wonderful when, like with, with you know, Levon, you you get to have a, a longer relationship and, and right. deeper and it goes, goes more. But for years, though, it was, you know, you're with Sally on Monday and Pete on Tuesday and, you know. And, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So it's that learning of like, wow, if I don't, if I don't just show up and like be prepared for anything, you know, really be oh, prepared yeah. and be okay, it's it's harder. Right. It's, it's harder. So, Absolutely. Yeah. It got you all prepared for, for family life here. You know? Yeah, no <laughs> all doubt. <that> dating. <laughs> um, what is the most important thing songwriters should know about the business of songwriting? Oh my gosh. I ask you well, that particularly because I think you're very good at business. Oh, and taking care of all your business. Up. You know, I think probably it, know the business or someone will know it for you. Does that make sense? That's fantastic. That's, that sums it all right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would read. I would ask questions. I wouldn't be shy um, about asking questions. And, and um, it, you know, I deal with uh, a lot of what I do now is, is develop artists. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't do the everyday thing with different writers right. like I used to. And, and that's been the beauty of putting in that time because mm -hmm. now I have the luxury of, right. of working with you know things that, that I love and um, I would I would I try to tell these kids that I work with you know I try to explain to them how money how money's generated and how mm -hmm. not selling the interesting thing about our business is that we're all independent at the end of the day we may have a relationship with a man you know with a publisher and something like that but we can write with whoever we want to mm -hmm. And the danger with a lot of young writers is there is an, and a lot of older writers too, is that there is an air of desperation about our business right now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people yeah. will do whatever they can to get a cut and they'll give away pieces of songs to whoever yeah. they can just yeah. to get, and they don't realize that when you do that, you set a precedent for everybody else. Right. I mean, I actually, I actually worked with an artist one time who said, I can't wait for my record to come out because next time I can ask for a piece of all the songs even though I don't write it. Uh, and I went, uh, sit down, let's have yeah. a talk. <laughs> Thank you, on behalf of all. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it's crazy. That, I mean, I get, I get what that's about, but when you, when you start doing that, you've, you've, you've really lowered the bar considerably. And, and it's, it's understandable a lot of people don't look at what we do as work. But when you don't look at what you do as work, well, then, then how is anybody else supposed to look yeah, at it as work? Yeah, it's like, you know, it's right. one thing to go, the song just came to me and it was a gift. But the reality is, is that you've woodshedded, you've worked your mm -hmm. butt off a lot to right. know how to um, form that into something that communicates right. to people. And that's really all we're doing is communicating. So. Well, we're communicating and helping a nation communicate, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the favorite thing is when somebody goes, I can't tell you how I feel, but listen to this, this song. Is this, is, this is how I, you know, mm -hmm. it gets the idea across. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How can a songwriter best improve upon their craft? Taking chances. Mm -hmm. Learning how to, um, I mean, I told somebody one time not too long ago, I was like, I don't really write bad songs anymore. And it's not that I'm not capable of it because I write a lot of stuff I don't finish. And that's the key is learning how not to finish. You know, the ones that are gonna take you nowhere or, right. you know, but right. um, but the, there is a comfort level of like, well, these guys are doing this and I know it works, so let's do it as well. And that's okay, I guess, you know, but it's more fun if you're able to take chances and try some stuff and, you know, make people kind of 
you know, freak them out a little bit. It's cool. Be your own editor and challenge yourself. Absolutely. Wow. Very good. So, what has been the most significant turning point in your career? Uh, my most significant turning point would have One been... One of them. Yeah. <laughs> One of them. Well, what changed perception for me and of me was, was working with Michael, and it was because of you. Oh, Michael Bolton. Yeah. I had, um, I had gotten into... Um, I cut a song on Chaz, Chaz Shepard, who was an artist that I was working with at the time. And, um, it was on the Seventh Heaven. I was on Seventh yeah. Heaven. He's an yeah. actor. actor, great singer. Yeah, and he, he was coming out right when Usher was happening, mm -hmm. and we did we did this uh, demo, and it things started happening really quickly. Got him a deal. I had no idea what I was doing, and from a production standpoint, and or from a business standpoint, I didn't know how to parlay that into a deal, but it happened anyway, and. Of course, I ask you a lot of questions, but I didn't. I didn't tell people I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, okay, I just nodded a lot. And um, but within a month of that happening, I was at your place with James Dean and and uh, got a call from Calman, Craig mm -hmm. Calman, and and I got offered a, a situation there. And the next two days later, you told me you had sent some songs out of writers that you had because you were working with Michael quite, quite a bit mm -hmm. and you had sent writers out um, songs to him and he picked mine as one of them and um, and then he and I met and got along and yeah. made a real, lot of bad jokes and, and he, was, <laughs> he was treated me really well and that parlayed into production and I got into that because I just he asked me if I could and I said sure yeah and that was it, even though I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so, a little bit, I think. You knew a little bit, doing, but I mean, you know, yeah. it was like a budget. Yeah. What's that? You yeah. know, I just it was weird. But when you get those chances, like you said, you just have to go for them. Yeah. You know, you, you're never going to be re all ready for anything. No, I mean, yeah. that, my whole thing was like the worst that could happen is that I could suck, and that's yeah. you know, and it 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 was it was okay. Yeah, it worked out all right. I'd say so. So, any advice would you like to um, give to the songwriters out there? Any particular any, any, direction? No, any, maybe like the best advice you've ever gotten, like to, to impart to them before we go. No, I think, I think what it is is to leave yourself open to, um, to all different kinds of music if you're of that ilk mm -hmm. and um, learn as much as you can, listen as much as you can and believe half of it <laughs> and, um, and definitely if it's really where your heart is and, and you've got people in your life who you can trust that will be honest with you and, and not just somebody who, who thinks you're, you know, if you're a girl who thinks you're cute and, and, and uh, you know, and then you, they, somebody wants to date you, and they're going to tell right. you what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. If you have someone who can say, "Yeah, you actually are good," you know, and not just lie to you, mm -hmm. and that's what your dream is, and figure out a way to do it. Yeah. That's great advice. Yeah, I do have one more though. Yeah. What's next for you? I think what I really want to do is, I've, you know, I, I think that our business is really. Um, open to alternative A&R sources now, mm -hmm. do you know, meaning uh, people who can develop artists mm -hmm. and, um, and give them as much of a finished product as possible. Right. And um, I think you have to constantly reinvent yourself. Nobody wants to buy my t-shirts. So I have to figure out a way, because our business has changed so much, um, figure out a way to make myself invaluable. So with this band Levon, for example, we, um, I was working with a singer from another band that was signed to Island and they got dropped. We started working together on this project, found some other guys, and um, we developed something that hopefully will be significant. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you have to take chances and you have to spend a little money to do it. And oh, if yeah. you can't afford it, get another job 
as well. And if you don't believe in yourself enough to invest it, do something else. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Thank sure. you so much. Sure. Really appreciate you. Uh, oh. We'll see. See how it goes. <laughs>